Um, for our project, we decided to look into the outcomes of a potential runoff election for third-party voters. Um, we made an online, online survey on, and shared it on campus. Um, we got 195 total responses. So here is a look at that process. Okay, so we're about to take our survey out to Sanford Mall and ask people to take it. And on our survey is general demographic data or questions asking um, race, gender, religion, uh, party identification. And we'll also have a question on there about how they voted and if they voted third party. Then we have an additional question for them that will ask how they would vote in a runoff, whether they would vote. Um, Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, or not vote at all. Did you ask what a runoff was? Yeah, what is it? Yeah, what they do is they take the top two people who had the most votes and then they run against each other again. And so basically after the 2016 election, um, Gary Johnson, Jill Stein, and all the other like third party candidates would be eliminated and Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton would run against each other in what would be like called a runoff. And so our like big question is like, where would third party voters vote if they did vote for like Gary Johnson or Joe Stein? Or like, would, if they were put into the situation? Right. Would they vote for Trump or Clinton or would they not vote at all? So, that's, that's basically what we're you know, using our tools. But there was a bit of a problem. Unfortunately, after looking at our data, not very many people finished the entire survey and our questions about a runoff election kind of seemed ridiculous. It'd be a waste of our data to focus on that. So we decided to create a new hypothesis. So the new hypothesis that we came up with was that there will be more independent and third party voters than party affiliated voters. So let's see what the data shows. In Figure 1, Participants Race, you can see the breakdown of respondents by the race that they selected. Out of the 195 responses, 1 was Asian, 8 were African American, 6 were Hispanic or Latino, 1 was Native Hawaiian or Pacific Islander, 9 were other, and 4 preferred not to answer. Our majority selected white, with 163 respondents. In Figure 2, Participant Religious Affiliation, you can see the breakdown of respondents by the religion that they selected. Out of the 195 respondents, 39 were agnostic, 22 were atheist, 4 were Jewish, 1 was Muslim, and 8 were other. The majority was Christian, with 115 respondents. In Figure 3, Participant Vote Choice, you can see how respondents voted in the 2016 election. Out of the respondents, 2 preferred not to answer, 7 reported other or for write-ins, 2 voted for Jill Stein, 12 voted for Gary Johnson, 40 voted for Donald Trump, and the majority voted for Hillary Clinton with 71 responses. In Figure 4, Participant Party Identification, you can see the reported party affiliation of the respondents. This is the data important for our hypothesis. Out of our respondents, 16 were Libertarians, 32 were Other, 64 were Republican, and by a small margin, the majority were Democrats with 78 responses.
In figure 5, you can see our graph for our test of one proportion of our respondents. The participants chose non-third parties 142 to 48 times over third parties. The test statistic is large enough to be confident in this result, with z equaling 7.95. This result means that our hypothesis of there would be more third-party voters than non-third-party voters was wrong. This also means that the test of one proportion for our sample is large enough to determine that the United States population as a whole will most likely choose non-third-party identification.